Hello, everybody, and welcome to this next episode of the I Hate Matt Wall podcast, poetry, stuff, and things, with your host, this motherfucker with two thumbs. Today, we are going to be talking about love and fun and art, okay? Okay. All three of those things. They're all important, and you need to have all of them. So let's not kid ourselves here, guys. These are things that we need. And you know what else we need? We need five stars on this fucking podcast. So wherever you listen to your podcasts, make sure that you put the highest rating possible for this show. And like last time, if you like to listen to podcasts on a certain place and for some reason it's not working let me know what those things are so i can fix it i just recorded the last episode a couple hours ago so i haven't fixed the amazon issue yet but i do know that it exists and knowing is half the battle (sighs) wiser words have never been spoken why i'm dropping all these fucking weird platitudes and pearls over here huh Uh, before we get any further let's hit those motherfucking shout outs i want to give a big thank you to my fuckers over on patreon i want to thank michael and cedar and harry you guys are awesome over in the thank you crew on the youtubes i want to give a big thank you to patrick to brit to jh to jam to deb and to ethan you guys are awesome for the swinging cocks over in the Anarchy Crew, I want to give a thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim J, to Shaylin, to Tim G, to Chill Baby, to Tamra, and to Adam. You guys are awesome. And for the biggest swinging dicks over in the Chapbook of the Month Club, which all of you guys should be in so you can get a copy of me as an action figure and every other chapbook that comes out every month. And access to over a hundred videos of lessons and workshops and exclusive Zoom writing calls and stuff like that. Plus weekly live streams. Jesus Christ, this is a fucking great deal. I think all of you should run over to youtube.com slash I think Matt Wall and sign up for that shit because that's the fucking shit. But let's thank those fucking chappies in the Chapbook of the Month Club. I want to give a big thank you to Caitlin. And my computer just died right in the middle of that. So, I'm sorry, chappies. Let me say this again. I want to give a big thank you to Caitlin and Chase. Thank you guys so much. (laughs) Chef's kiss. Okay. All right. So, moving on to the tidbits of the shizzo. Um, I talked briefly about this in my live stream today. And so, this is what we're getting into. Because time is short. I don't have a lot of it. I have been hearing over the years... And more so now, and I think now I'm hearing more about it just because of the whole poetic anarchy thing and um, me doing the mentorship and all this stuff. Like, I'm hearing more and more people talk to me about this thing where they're kind of falling out of love with poetry and their writing and things of that nature. And I think there are a couple very like, to me, obvious reasons why this is. And then I think there's some other reasons that aren't so obvious that I think if I point them out to you guys, like, you'll go, oh, shit, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm on board. Let's do this. The first thing I'm going to say, and again, I said this in my live stream, but I'm going to say it again. If you aren't having fun writing, stop writing. Just fucking walk away don't do it let it breathe give yourself some time collect yourself only do this if you're enjoying it 
if you're having a good time with it. Because if you don't enjoy it, readers will be able to pick up on that. They will see that you don't fucking care and you're phoning it the fuck in. You will be able to tell that you're phoning it in. And then when you read back the stuff you wrote, you'll start feeling like shit because you will know that you phoned it in and that you can tell that you phoned it in. Okay? So, first off, right off the bat, if you feel like it's not fun, stop. If you feel like you aren't in love with it anymore, like you were at one point, stop. Think about it for a little bit. Or don't think about anything for a little bit. But what I would like you to think about is the reasons why you're not in love with it and why it's not fun. And look at all of it. Because if it's something where you're like, you know what? I'm just not really digging this anymore. Okay, let's look at what you are being inspired by. Inspiration is a huge fucking thing. And if you're reading stuff that is not inspiring you, why the fuck would you want to create art in the first place? You know what I'm saying? I don't know how much I think this is 100% accurate, but, like, we're only as good is our muse. Muses come and go, and muses come in different forms. Like, a muse can be a beautiful woman. A muse can be a super fucking hot guy. A muse can be a song. A muse can be porn. Muse, a muse could be food. It could be just the, the way the sun shines through your fucking blinds in the afternoon. You know? Like, it could be any fucking thing if it's making you fucking want to create. Okay? And when you think about what that is, it's inspiration. Okay? So if your inspiration is not there, your writing will not be there. I mean, you can do the fucking thing. We all know how to fucking write something. But is it going to have your fucking soul, your spirit, your fucking balls, your whatever, are those things going to be in it? And if you don't have a muse, if you don't have inspiration, then you will not have those things. Okay? One thing I would say to do is think about what your muse is and if you even have one. If nothing out there is inspiring you, then wait for that inspiration to come. Okay? Be conscious of it. Be conscious that you're, like, waiting for it. But don't force something that doesn't need to happen yet. Okay? Another thing is, I hear this... This is the thing that, like, is one of those things that get interweaved within a lot of people I talk to who have this problem. I ask them, like, what they're reading. And they're like, I'm not really reading anything. Like, Like, honestly, I'll pick something up, and I'm just, like, not that into it, and I just don't fuck with it. Like, I don't read it. I'm just not... I don't like it. Meh. Okay? That is one of these problems. Because, like I was saying a few minutes ago, like, we may be only as good as our inspiration. Okay? So, what I say to that is, like, well, what's something that you really like? Like, what's, like, a book that you've read... A bunch of times like what who's a poet you read all the time and feel good about when you read them like what is the thing that got you into wanting to do this in the first place like who fucking sparked that fucking ember in you find out who that is and just read that shit there's a lot of garbage out there i've heard of people who used to be editors for magazines who were just like, I just fucking don't really like poetry anymore. It's fucking bleh. I'm just not into it. I've heard poets say, like, you know what? I just I haven't read anything in a long time. I haven't written anything in fucking even longer. And I just don't fucking care. And then we go into this, like, whole existential crisis where we're like, God damn, dude. Like, my whole life, I thought I was going to be this thing. And now I'm just like, meh. So what the fuck am I? What am I going to do? Who am I? 
And you go through this whole fucking weird downward spiral. And you don't need to do that. Okay? You just need to stick with what works. You know? If you read this one person, and this one person always makes you feel good, keep reading that. Dude, when I was making movies, okay? And I said this on the live stream too. When I, when I was making movies, I would watch David Lynch movies and John Waters movies over and over and over again. I would watch Roger Corman movies and Ed Wood movies over and over and over again. The Universal Monster movies, I'd watch those over and over again. Hitchcock, the Hitchcock movies I liked, I would watch over and over again. Okay? And if I kept watching, like, other shit that I didn't like, like, where's the inspiration? Because, like, and I said this, I I can't remember where the fuck I said this. I said it quite recently. But if you read something that's shit and you're like, oh, I could write something better than that. And, like, you think about it like that and you're just like, that's garbage. I could write better than that. Okay, write something better than that. Do you feel good about yourself now? You already knew you could do it beforehand. So why the fuck are you even going to bother? Like, you knew the outcome before you started. So what, like, justification do you have? Like, do you feel super good about yourself now? No? You just feel like shit still? Okay. Read something that makes you inspired to where you say, Oh my god, that is so fucking good. I wonder if I could write something that good. I wonder if I could write something fucking better than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, have your inspirations and have them, like, fuel you. But now that we hit this point, the other thing that people have a problem with is um, comparing themselves to others. So if you read something really good and then you say, oh, man... I wish I could write something like that, but I doubt I'll ever be able to write something that good. I'll never be able to write something better than that. You've already failed. Instead of using the word wish, change that word to wonder. Instead of saying, I wish I can do this, say, I wonder if I can. Leave that door open. You are a very powerful person. Our words carry a lot of meaning inside of us, okay? So change that wish word and change that never word to wonder. And then once you're able to do that, pretty soon you're going to be able to say, you could change that word to wonder and change it to can. I can write something better than that. Let's see. Watch me do it. Watch me fucking write something better than this. And if you're doing it off of something that you really love, when you accomplish that, you're going to feel so fucking good. Whereas if you were, oh, I can write something better than that off of something you hate, that's not a fucking big feat. That's like, oh, watch, I could jump an inch off the ground. Look how cool I am. Watch. Did you see that? That was awesome, right? But if I say, I wonder if I could fucking slam dunk a fucking basketball. You know, we'll, we'll see. Do you guys see where I'm going with this? Do you understand what's happening here? All right. So you have to have fun with what you're doing. You have to enjoy it. Okay. If you don't enjoy something, it becomes a job. If you do enjoy it, it's art. Okay. If you are really striving and then some people go oh isn't that what a career is <laughs> you know like if you don't like what you do for a living it's a job if you do like it it's a career cool if you want to use that for this fine do it if you enjoy what you're doing with your writing it's a career if you don't it's a job okay and the other thing if you want to look at art as a job versus career thing The one thing people do when they're not making enough money at a job is they quit or they look for another job, okay? But a lot of times, when people aren't making enough money for a career, they just try harder and they push. 
because it's their fucking passion and they're going to fucking do it no matter what. Have drive. Or do like Bukowski says and don't try. You know what I'm saying? And the whole don't try thing, I've talked about on this show before, I'm sure I have. Um, he has a a quote on his tombstone, on his headstone, that has a picture of a boxer, and it says, don't try. And a lot of people think that means, like, give up and, you know, like, quit. Don't do, don't do what I did. Quit. Just, like, don't even bother okay and that's not what it means what it means is don't try to do something just fucking do the thing do the thing like they're like oh i tried to write a book but i didn't okay so you didn't write a book is what you're trying to say uh i tried to do this but okay so you didn't do that thing okay so what what are you going to do now? Well, I'm going to try to... No. If you try to do something, you're not going to do it. If you do something, it's already done. So fucking do the thing. Okay? That's That's always been a big fucking thing for me. Just fucking do the thing. If you say you're going to fucking do something, do the thing. And then if you end up not being able to do it, don't say, I tried to do something. Just say, I didn't do that thing. Things are very this way or that way. Like, there's not a whole lot of wiggle room. There are words to make up excuses for wiggle room, but those are just words that just are excuses, okay? So that's what that means. I feel like I'm flying all over the place right now. I just think it's really important for people who... And if I'm talking to you right now, if you're listening to this going, oh, shit, that, that's me, then hear this bit, Okay. If you feel like you used to love writing poetry and you just really don't anymore and you used to love reading poetry and you just don't anymore, just go back to the things that you love, the things that make your heart sing. You don't need to be well read. You don't need to read every motherfucker that ever existed. You don't have to read the literary fucking canon. It's all bullshit. Find what you like, read it, enjoy it, feel good about it, be inspired by it, and then create great art because of that muse. That's all That's all life is. Everything we do in our life, whether it's fucking walking down the street, going to the fucking store, taking someone out on a date, um, painting the inside of your apartment... Whatever it is, do it with fucking goddamn fucking style. Do it like you fucking are dying to fucking do it. Why fucking do anything if you're not going to give a shit about it? Do the things that you fucking love to do. Don't do stuff you don't want to do because you'll be fucking miserable. But find the things that you love do those fucking things and do them fucking hard. And you will be a fucking happy motherfucker. Like, this isn't fucking rocket science, but we live in this fucking world where simple fucking things like this seem to not make sense to people. If you loved poetry at one point and you want to love it again, it's like going to fucking relationship therapy, couples counseling. Like, what happened? What went wrong? Like, you can... It's like that whole thing where... There's a couple... This is an analogy for you guys here. There's a couple driving in a car. And... He's driving, let's say... This is how I heard the analogy. I'm not trying to do any fucking gender fucking assignments here. He's driving the car. And there's a big bench seat in the in the front seat of the car. Bench seats, for those of you who are fucking too young to fucking know, are when the front seat of a car was one whole seat. (laughs) It was awesome because you could do a lot of fun stuff on them. All right. So anyway, so some dude's driving his car, bench seat, and his wife 
is got her arm leaning out the window on the passenger side and she looks over at him and he looks really fucking far away and she says you know when we first started dating we used to be a lot closer and I remember driving in this car with you and I would cuddle up next to you and you'd have your arm around me and we don't do that anymore how come and he's like well, I don't know. I still got to drive the car. You're all the way over there by the window. Like, you moved away. Like, I can't not be sitting here with the steering wheel. You moved to the window. I'm still here, and I'm not going anywhere. Just slide back over, baby. Just slide back over, baby. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, with the things that we love, that's the deal. Like... You read this book that you used to love, and now you're reading a bunch of crap that you don't like, and so now you're not liking reading anymore. And then you remember, oh man, there was that time when I read that book, and I love that book. What's going on with that book? Well, it's on the bookcase where you fucking left it. Books don't get up and walk away. Go get the book. Do the thing. You know what I'm saying? So I hope this is inspiring to you somehow or another. Have fun. Be in love with it be inspired wait for the muse or search the muse out you know what to do do the thing all right so butt plug time all i'm going to talk about right now is me as an action figure get this new chap book of my poetry right now at the etsy shop at the link down below it is poems about my childhood and nostalgia and the whole fucking thing. You will love it. I love it. So you love it. Make sure you go over to YouTube and join this fucking channel, man. You got the Thank You Crew, the Anarchy Crew, the Chapbook of the Month Club. And I think next month I'm going to be having another tier in there. That's even bigger and better and more awesomer. So there is that. Um, the next thing I want to say is I don't know when this is going to come out. I think it'll still be before. But May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, something big is happening in my Etsy shop. I can't tell you what it is yet. But it will be so big and so devastating that the whole world will be watching from underwater. Just kidding. I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes I think I'm that fucking LaFontaine guy that died a long time ago. He used to do all the movie trailers. Anyway. May 5th. Cinco de fucking Mayo. On Mayo Etsy shop. Um... There is going to be something happening there, and you will find out about it probably the day before. Um, I don't want to drop something on you guys so bad that you don't know what the fuck's happening. But yeah, May 5th, something big. Okay, so make sure. Make sure you are ready for something big on Cinco de Mayo. Okay, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be huge. And it's going to be the coolest thing ever because I said so. All right? So, cool. Blood Rag Issue 10 is out now, I think. Um, I have to go check again. But issues 1 through 9 are available on my website, IHateMountWall.com. So get them, download them for free, and print them out and paste them all over your damn town. Or you could be a cool motherfucker and go over to Etsy and just buy one for a dollar. That'd be awesome, too. Even though it's going to cost me like 70 cents to send it to you. So, just fucking download it off my fucking website. Alright. Cool, 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 cool. Alright, so with that fucking said, keep buying my books, type hard everybody, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.